Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to the review of my coloring book collection. First of all, huge thank you for all your amazing comments which you left to me after the first video. I was extremely happy to read all of them. I want to start this second video from the Coloring Haven magazines. And I am very grateful to Coloring Haven that thanks to this magazine I discovered for myself a lot of amazing artists and many of them became my favorites. And it was the case with Meredith Dillman. Here in this magazine we have a mix of her two coloring books. One is about fairies and the second one about kimono foxes, so a little bit with Asian Sam and I love both. Meredith Dillman for me is a perfect artist. I love how she creates composition, I love faces of her fairies, I love their dresses, I love mix of Asian style, some medieval style fantasy, so very inspiring for me. And I also like that I can use different mediums. Here I used Prisma colors for the fairy, Neo colors for the background, and I worked on the, also on the background with pencils and with Pergash and watercolors. I adore all pictures in this magazine and I hope that maybe one day I will be able to finish it. Here for the Orc Maiden I created matte acrylic background and in contrast to the background I did those perlescent wings. I covered them with acrylic paint and then with perlescent watercolors. The rest was quite easy. For the Orc Maiden I used traditional orange, yellow and green colors both for the leaves and for the dress. It was easy and it was very fun to do. This picture always was one of my favorites because Meredith Dillman is a great botanical artist also and I love peach flowers here. I wanted to do very soft background but didn't want to use soft pastels, so I struggled a lot with this pencil background. But at least I managed to color all flowers. I remember that I was afraid that fairy, which is also pink and magenta, will be slightly lost between flowers. So I colored her with very bright wings. It's Prisma color sage and aquamarine or probably light aqua. Anyway, they really helped my fairy to be the focal point of the picture. On the background I mixed a lot of different pencils, even watercolor coffee Norman de Luz and couple of colors of Faber Castell Art Grip, which I have, so it was quite a struggle with the background. This Night Fairy was my first picture which I did here and again I love how composition of the picture looks that it's quite small and limited by the frame but still very intense and very detailed. I love that I can practice coloring um, highlighted objects scenes during night and day. Again here I used some perlescent watercolors on the wings and I also to the background I think that I splashed a little bit of pearl watercolors. In my opinion all books by Meredith Zillman are really good even for beginners. Faces are not big, pictures are very beautiful, botanical elements, animals, dresses, Everything is so nicely depicted, so it's very easy to color and also a lot of things to practice your coloring skills. So I highly recommend, if you don't have this magazine, you can purchase one or two books by Meredith Dillman and I am sure that you will enjoy them. Next magazine is by Lindsay Archer. I don't know if she has coloring books. But at least this magazine is great. 
Even if I colored so far only two pictures, both in the end of the previous year, I am really in love with this magazine, mostly because I love everything related to mythology, to different gods, for me it's quite interesting. And here on Ganesha, I like how I managed to do shading and the color which I selected for his body. Also, it was my first attempt to do background with gouache paint. I used it directly after I purchased my set of gouache. And I also like how I managed to do his golden elements. I am completely not happy with his clothes, both with his trousers and coat. I think that I started to be a little bit tired of this picture, so I wasn't very precise and careful while I was coloring all folds on his clothes. Anyway, I still like this picture. I colored it for the coloring contest, and it was picture for the belly dance, and the second picture for the same coloring contest was flamenco. And I converted this witch spell into flamenco dance. It's also a very important picture for me, because I colored it when I received my first set of acrylic paints. As a gift it was beautiful professional mimery paints. And everything here, apart from her skin, is colored with acrylic paints. It was quite fun to do this bright background, very passionate. I still remember how I struggled with folds on her black dress, so for me it was very instructive. I also love many pictures with male gods here, especially with Scandinavian northern mythology gods here, and I definitely plan to color them one day. I like Lindsay Archer style of drawing figures and faces even if backgrounds are a little bit empty. And if you know if she has published coloring books, please let me know below in the comments. Look at those beautiful Scandinavian gods. Next is a magazine by other my favorite artist Jody Bergsma. When I got this magazine, I was extremely happy and very inspired. To color animals isn't a very easy task for me, so I was very eager to start practicing. But unfortunately, I managed to color only one picture so far. Here again I used a mix of different mediums. Gouache paints mostly for the background and then for the details and especially for the Indian. Here I used Derwent drawing pencils, they work really well for the theme and for the subjects on this coloring book. And I really enjoyed process, so I don't know, I can't explain why I hadn't returned to this book. I am very happy with this my finished picture, I wanted to do immediately the second one, I even selected picture with the beer. And I even purchased a special set of acrylic colors. Probably you know about my set of 12 colors of grace. And I thought that those muted acrylic colors would be perfect for this book. But I still hadn't colored in it yet. Probably it's because I always think that video won't be popular. So it's my fault because I color not for myself some, sometimes, but for YouTube channel. And I think that maybe I will declare January as a month of coloring portraits and February could be for me a month of coloring animals. So definitely I want to color something in this beautiful magazine. And we go to the magazine by Hannah Lean. It's my only one magazine or book by Hannah. I don't have anything else. For me, it's quite difficult to color faces or for girls. Even if I like subject and I admire how productive she is and how many beautiful and interesting books she published, 
it's still difficult for me to color them. I think that for me it will be enough to color pictures in this magazine, which I really like, mostly because I like everything related to illustrating fairy tales, and it's enough. I admire going to other channels, especially to the channel of V. She does amazing works on Hannah Lynn pictures, so I admire them, but I simply can't color them. The only picture I am happy with is this one, and mostly because of the background, which I did with neo colors. It was interesting to do this stars around her magical wand and also that I colored her dress using pastel highlighters. It also was interesting experience. I still plan to color several pictures from this magazine, but Hannah Lynn is a difficult artist for me. And the last coloring heroin magazine where I have finished works is this annual for the previous year and I am so lucky that I have this magazine, mostly because here I have works by Angela Cesar and Adele Lorian. And also I tried to color my first Jasmine Beckett Griffith image in this magazine. In the beginning of my coloring career, my coloring hobby, I wasn't able to understand art of Jasmine Beckett Griffith and I was sure that I would never color such girls and such images. But then, after a couple of years, I tried and I fall in love immediately. And after those finished couple of pictures, I realized that I need to purchase her books. For the both pictures here I used various mediums for acrylic markers for the background, color blend pencils for the skulls. For the previous picture I used neon colors on the background, so it was a lot of experimenting. Here I am proud of the color of her hair and how it looks together with her very pale blue eyes. I am thinking about using the same color scheme for the Alice, for Jasmine Beckett Griffith book Alice in Wonderland, because I really love this girl. And I don't know why, but on faces on Jasmine Beckett Griffith girls, it's quite easy for me to do shading. A little bit of dark color around those cute noses and face is ready. As I said, I treasure this magazine because of the Angela Cesar, beautiful images and images by Edel Lorian. Unfortunately, I don't have separate magazines or separate books by this artist and both of them are amazing. Everything is so detailed and so beautifully drawn, from faces to all botanical elements. And I am extremely lucky to have at least several images by each of the artists. During last months I wanted to start coloring these two goddesses by Selina Fenick. You know that recently I developed a huge love to Selina drawings. But I still hesitate. Do I need to purchase a separate book, Goddess? Or do I need to color in the magazine? I think that if I like Selena Fennec art so much, I definitely would want to purchase the whole book. And it's that's the reason why I hadn't started to color those goddesses yet. But they are in my plans. Next, I decided to show you my August Reverie Part 2 by Chintaka Harris. Here I have only one finished picture. Designs here are quite interesting, but paper is a little bit thin. And when I colored this image, I didn't have neon colors or gouache paints or acrylic paints yet, so I struggled a lot with doing backgrounds. On this paper it was 
not possible to use watercolors and you know that I don't like to do backgrounds with pencils. So I managed to color only this portrait and I enjoyed it. Tooth of paper is not bad and I used a mix of different pencils here. But as I said, background was the reason why I stopped coloring in this book. Maybe now, when I have better selection of mediums, one day I will return to this book. Even if now I have more interesting and more inspiring books with fantasy portraits like book of Nicholas Philbert or books by Selina Fennec. Now let's go to the Game of Thrones and I have two coloring books. In the HBO official coloring book I finished only one portrait here. I was afraid to start coloring any other portraits and this one was less terrifying. I discovered that on this paper harder pencils behaved better, so there was a mix of budget pencils. Now when I have polychromos I think that I will try to color in this book with polychromos. I think that they will be the best choice. I selected this picture because it was quite interesting for me to color different textures like his metal and leather armor or stone window behind of him, so it was interesting, even if not very easy to color. So I am proud of this one and I am still afraid to start anything else, even if I planned to color one of the landscapes and again I planned to use acrylic paints from my 12 colors of grey set. The second Game of Thrones book is a completely different story. First, it's one of the very few Ukrainian coloring books which I own. And second, it's one of the most completed books in my collection. In the beginning of my coloring hobby I colored a lot of it. And it's quite fun to look at several pictures which I did in the beginning of my hobby like this one and compare them with my current level, with my current coloring skills. For me it's very interesting and sometimes I like to compare. I started to color when I didn't ho have Prisma colors, so I tried to mix color softs and ink tents. Then I discovered that even if picture is a if paper is of medium quality, as pictures are one-sided, I can use watercolors here. And for me it was like discovery of the century. I don't know why I hadn't imagined that I can use watercolors in one-sided coloring books. And it definitely was a huge step forward for me. I started to experiment and mixing mediums more and more. All those house sigils are my early works. I also participated in Color Along, so I managed to finish quite a lot of pictures here. I left uncolored yet the most difficult, the most complicated pictures, mostly portraits, but my last finished picture is this portrait of Varys and I am still very proud of this picture. Here I managed to color almost everything with watercolors and I tried to show silk and velvet surfaces of his clothes, also wooden surfaces and velvet with golden embroidery on the fabric behind him. Only for the face and arms I used Prisma colors. I am not happy with the red castle in the window, but with anything else I am proud and I am happy. I like Varys in TV series and I like him here on the picture. When I read a book, for me it was quite ridiculous that Darion Harris had blue hair and bird. 
for me it's quite unattractive. So when I decided how to color him, I decided that he will have black hair with a little bit of blue into it. For me it's much better. I had a lot of fun doing his clothes and armory. Again, I used watercolors as an underpaint and then worked with different pencils, mostly with Kohinoor Mandelous and Prisma colors for the details. But I am not happy with background at all. I don't know why I selected this strange magenta pink lilac color for the flags. And also, the whole background isn't very detailed. My next picture is one of my favorites. It's my yearly work, but I am still proud of it. Mostly because it's a beautiful drawing by Tomislav Tomic, so it's easy to color. But I am proud that I managed to color it with watercolors. All my early works suffered from lack of dark colors, of contrast, of shading, and here I managed to do quite satisfying work, so I am still happy how everything looks here. The next one with the, the Trekkie Rider wasn't very inspiring for me from the beginning, and I am not um, completely happy how it looks. But at least I managed to do it. As I said, a lot of pictures here I made for the color long. It was quite long and I am very thankful that I managed to do a lot of pictures which I was afraid to start. They were difficult for me, but I colored them and I learned a lot. Here it was one of my attempts to color full. And even if here texture of fur was already printed, it was challenging. I also struggled to find colors for the fur on the, on the giant to make him different from the fur on the mammoth. So I learned a lot of, about coloring fur there. This was my second finished picture in this book. Directly after I purchased it, I did this page with ink tents completely and here I am quite happy how bark look, how leaves look and even how the main character looks. But I am not happy how the forefront and background looks. There is no difference and no depth to this picture. I would add now more shadows, more dark colors. But still, it's, it was a nice part of my learning experience and I still like to look at these pictures. Here I failed to do those rays of light going through the leaves of the tree. But the lower part with stones and bark of the tree and water is not bad. For all the landscapes here, I used the same method. I did underpaint with watercolors and then worked on the details with my colored pencils. And this was the first page where I even tried to use watercolors. Again, I am not happy with the lack of contrast and there is no perspective and no difference between the forefront and the lens which are far from us, but still I like to look at my early works. In this book I also tried to learn how to draw water, especially during the storm. I finished a couple of such pictures here. A lot of stones, a lot of buildings here. I was quite proud of this watercolor background, very soft gradients here. And on the wall I added very dark, almost black dried blood, so there is a contrast between soft sky and quite ominous buildings. Some pictures I tried to color in a very fantasy way. And you know that only later I realized why I love this book so much. It's because it's a 
mix of works of my favorite artists. Here we have Tomislav Tomic, here we have Anyvon Gilbert, here we have John Hall, who is famous for doing, for doing pictures and scenery for the Tolkien movies and books. So drawings are amazing and coloring them is quite easy and also very instructive. Here I used a lot of Derwent drawing pencils for the wooden details and also for some parts of the clothes and of course watercolor for the background. It was interesting to draw ice and stormy sky. I still like this book a lot and I definitely plan to return to it and to finish it. I think that one of the reasons why I like doing these videos with a review of my finished pictures and of my whole book collection because it gives me possibility to remember how many beautiful books I have and unfortunately how many of them are neglected so I can give them a chance and to return to them. Here I made a mistake with the color of the sail for Bravo's ship, but I am proud of my sky and of the stormy ocean. It was very interesting to draw it. Again, the whole background is made with watercolors. Here I needed a lot of patience for all the details of the Iron Throne, for all the swords, and mostly I colored here with color salts and also with Kohinoor Mondelus. I love to use Mondelus here by themselves and also on top of the watercolor underpaint, so very helpful pencils. In this book I practice how to many different surfaces like silk, like glass, like wood, like many metal objects, like armor here, some stone buildings and of course interesting clothes with a lot of details. But some pictures I felt completely like this one. I don't like it at all. I don't know why, probably because I don't like this yellow silk where I placed this dragon X. so it's my least favorite picture in the whole book. This one is one of my earliest works, so it definitely lacks contrast and shadow behind the sword, between sword and the background, but I like how I did this part of the steel to show the shining on the steel surface and also how I tried, how I practiced to coloring leather parts of the sword. If you like Game of Thrones and if you are not very disappointed by last seasons, I definitely recommend to purchase this book. You will practice to color a lot of things. This one my, was my first picture I ever colored in this book. Again, you can see terrible lack of shadows and contrasts. Everything here I colored with color salts and at that moment I was quite proud of my work. Anyway, it's a beautiful book with amazing artists and also with very interesting pictures, so I can recommend it from all my heart. And if I already have shown you a couple of pictures by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, which I met in Coring Haven magazine, I decided to make a review of the finished works in her coloring book. I am very happy that I purchased it, because quality of Blue Angel books is amazing. I love their paper. Paisley was one of my favorite paintings by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, but here I desperately tried to color it in different way. I like her blue beige hair and also her beige and violet wings. I am happy that I tried to color her skin in slightly darker colors. And I also like those dark cherry, dark raspberry, dark violet colors, which I used for the background. 
I always love them and it's great that I was able to use them here. In the book of Jasmine Beckett Griffith I used a lot of dark colors and it's unusual for me and that's why I love this book for this possibility. Pipistrella is my recently finished and I'm quite proud that I tried to show the duplicity of the character that during the day she is a Venetian lady and because of this I added this beautiful carnival dress and during the night she is a mistress of bats like a superhero so she has a black dress, black wing and also black jewelry. I also added ornament on the mask in two different ways. I was inspired by Venetian carnival masks. Her hairstyle reminds me about huge wigs which people put on during Venetian carnival and that's why it's pale grey and white. And I also draw couple of details to show that we are at Venice. Here we have gondola. I enjoyed coloring so much. I enjoyed drawing these additional details. It was challenging, but it also was very interesting. This all in was my Halloween coloring this year. I also added here a couple of details, but only a little one, some ornament on her dress and the feather mask. When I color in this book, I always try to limit my color palette and to use the same color repeatedly in several places on the picture, like here I used mahogany red for the sky for the a little bit sinister red sky and for the highlights on her hair. It's interesting for me and also very helpful for me to develop my coloring skills. I also like that we have a lot of pictures connected to the poems of Edgar Allan Poe. On this picture it was my first in this book. I enjoyed doing this bloody moon and also I like how I managed to color her wing. Her face was a challenge, not very successful, but I am learning how to do proper shading. I also finished here two small projects. One I did in June, probably when I created for myself months for coloring dragons. And the second orc maiden I colored with a lot of prisma colors, but also with addition of metal watercolors to add shining and magical touch. And it's great to have in the book such small projects, still very detailed, but very quick to finish. And another Halloween picture, which I finished previous months, was this skeleton magic. I already have seen so many beautiful variations of this very popular picture and also original painting by Jasmine Beckett Griffiths, so I tried to find something individual, at least some not very popular color for her dress, that's why I selected this magenta. Also she is doing spell and we have these green sparkles from her magical wand to the skeletons and they became alive. It was a big work for me to think about source of light. You can see that light is coming from the magical book. To think about all highlights on her hair, on the arms, on her face, on the clothes, on the skeletons. And probably it's my only one coloring book where I use so many dark colors. So. It's another reason to treasure this book and I definitely plan to start my second book by Jasmine Beckett Griffith about Alice in the next month. And that's the end of the second part. Once again, thank you for your kindest comments. I hope that this part also won't disappoint you and I will see you in the next one. Happy coloring to all of you!